Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Rocket and uh, I'm going to be talking about the range issues on the Phantom 4 Professional. A uh, bit of background on myself, I've been uh, flying quadcopters and building them for about six years. Uh, all the way through from uh, messing with racing drones, building quadcopters and hexacopters for various applications from aerial photography to security surveillance and so forth. I've just about flown around every conceivable kind of building, object, boat, train, plane, whatever you want to call it. And um, I switched over to the Phantom 3 uh, Pro about a year and a half ago. And uh, that's this little baby over here. And um, I've flown her successfully. Never had one crash with her ever. Um, over 1,300 plus flights. Um, many, many, many hours as you can imagine. And uh, she's just been a dream. Has been rebuilt once into a new case but only after a thousand two hundred flights that I actually start to see cracks on the motor mounts only cracks I had before then was on the actual wrist mounts but uh, up until then she's a dream still a dream and uh, I love her to bits I did sell the original Phantom 3 Pro um, and uh, replaced it with the, the newer model uh, just because I needed the backup machine as most of us, got a Phantom 4 Professional for Christmas and um, very impressed with the machine in general. There's enough videos that's going over all the other features and amazing things that this uh, drone can do. But for me, <clears throat> I was plagued with range issues until today. Um, I took this out for a couple of test flights over the ocean and the minute I get to 700 to 1000 meters I start losing signal and um, that happened to me once I lost signal did a lot of weird stuff came home wasn't happy um, the latest firmware literally came out two days ago upgraded it went out again again got to about a thousand meters um, and uh, it just lost signal completely um, the only time I got signal back again is when she was doing a return to home yeah at about 650 meters um, so yeah, been doing some R&D on some wide, wide open spaces, especially over the ocean as it's far away on a remote beach from houses, people and all that kind of stuff because we obviously got to try and be as safe as we can. But we need to know if these machines can do what they can do. It doesn't help you have a machine that can fly very far, fly uh, very well, but the day you need it and you get into trouble, you can't handle it. Anyway, so I see a lot of guys complaining about range issues. Now this thing is advertised at seven kilometers um, or four miles, I think it is in, uh, in, in the mile range. But anyway, and the Phantom 3 Pro is advertised at two, and then eventually they changed that to five kilometers. And yeah, she can do that. Being on the many, many trips over the ocean and faraway farms um, in uh, the Sutu where there's little to no um, signal uh, interference, flew very, very far. Um, over the dam and it just flies so I was rather perplexed with this machine that can now do 2.4 gigahertz 5.8 gigahertz and you can't fly more than a thousand meters so what was the issue well after some research scratching my head looked a bit more into the difference between 5.8 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz I'm not going to go into all the technical explanations, I'm not going to use all the technical words, I'm going to keep this simple for the average guy watching this. I just don't want to get technical and use lots and lots of big words. So basically 5.8 gigahertz is a wider spectrum or band, again forgive me for not using the right terminology but you'll get the meaning. So 5.8 is a wider band of options for when you have more noise. So you get a good signal quality at short range amongst a lot of obstacles, buildings, trees and that sort of thing. So if you were going to take pictures of a construction site or fly where there's a lot of buildings and that sort of stuff, if you had permissions and all the right things in place, the 5.8 gigahertz band would probably be your better option because it's got more bandwidth and therefore less noise on a wider range. But long distance, forget it. I would not be risking it. Switch to 2.4 gigahertz and you can fly really, really far. So I changed it over to 2.4 gigahertz, went out to a remote farm, far away from all people, roads and planes and all that kind of good stuff, and got two kilometers, no problem, solid signal strength. However, there is a twist to the tail. Two twists in actual fact. The one is on 2.4 gigahertz, 
when you start flying really far you do have a bit of a downgrade in quality compare it to when you're watching youtube in full hd or 720 and your internet connection drops a bit and your image goes from 720 down to 316 you notice a bit of a quality change but, but you're still able to watch whatever you're watching not too bad that's what happens when you're flying at 2.4 and you get really really far but up until two kilometers or more you can have a fairly good 720 image provided there is not too much noise um, so again open fields long range 2.4 gigahertz in general is the better thing to go it has better strength for the signal to go through obstacles however it's not as wide banded as the 5.8 range but for long distance flying 2.4 is what you want to be in so that is the key another interesting point is with the controller on the phantom 3 professional my favorite uh, way of flying is obviously my tablet in the tablet compartment um, or holder and my aerials are normally at 90 degrees and slightly uh, apart and however in this configuration same as the phantom 3 the phantom 4 professional doesn't like it at all it's really 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 sensitive so when i went out for my test today doing the 2.4 gigahertz test the phantom 4 professional was very very happy when i set the configuration on my aerials like this if you can look at that so it's about a 45 degree angle and almost parallel next to each other flying in this position with the drone at about 50 to 70 meters um, i was able to get really really good reception and the only uh, signal drop i had was the normal expected signal drop where it comes and goes for a split second now and then depending on many factors i guess so i believe the problem has been solved I don't think it's a hardware issue i don't think it's a firmware issue provided you're on the latest firmware of course that's what i did the test on so 2.4 gigahertz is the thing to do all right but back to the app the go app 4 will give you two options automatic next to automatic you've got 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 and you press automatic i think the confusion is coming is that when you think that you see the option of 2.4 and 5.8 with automatic next to it and you choose automatic you think um, and so did i incorrectly that the machine will choose between the, the stronger one if it's flying and it finds that there's stronger options on 2.4 it will change to 2.4 or if there's stronger options on 5.8 it'll change to 5.8 that is an incorrect assumption all that means is that it'll choose the best channel on 2.4 or the best channel on 5.8 so if you clicked on auto and change it to custom you will see that you have to go in under custom settings choose whichever channel and there's about 16 or 20 of them and under 5.8 the same thing however when you put it to auto all that auto it does doesn't mean auto between 2.4 or 5.8 it means auto that it will automatically choose the best strength channel under 2.4 or under 5.8 so go choose auto go and choose uh, 2.4 and you should have some happy flying on long range. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please leave your comments below. If they're positive comments, negative comments, as long as they're not rude comments and stupid comments. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to help some guys out there.